Hi, my name is Will, and today I'd like to discuss the definition of a term that's coming up a lot lately in the news and in conversations about the future of technology, and that's AGI. AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, is formally defined as an artificial intelligence that can perform as well or better than humans on a wide range of cognitive tasks. Sometimes this is called strong or full AI. The idea there is to draw a contrast between general intelligence and task-specific intelligence. For example, if I put a computer chip in a toaster to make sure it makes perfect toast every single time, that's a form of task-specific intelligence, and that would be a weak AI. Now, you probably wouldn't want to give a toaster AGI, and you could make a case that that would actually be somewhat cruel. The weird thing is, is that in practice, this definition of AGI is almost totally useless. We don't have a solid, independently verifiable, testable definition of AGI. AGI is based on human intelligence, and we don't have a lot of good definitions that, for that. People have been proposing tests over the years for a long time. The most famous, of course, is the Turing test or the imitation game. That goes all the way back to 1950. Turing suggested that if you were to have a conversation with a computer and a human where both were hidden behind a curtain, if you couldn't tell the difference, then you've achieved artificial intelligence. The thing is, is that that was beaten back in 2014, and most people would say that we don't actually have true AGI yet. We used to think of tool use or language as examples of human intelligence, and we found animals that do all those things. So we wind up moving the goalpost. More recently, there have been some other tests that were proposed. One of them was the robot college test, which said if an AI can pass college level exams, except that was broken in 2023. There's the coffee test, which is the idea that a robot could come into your house and make a cup of coffee, figure out how to do all that. We don't have that one yet, but that's where when I look at something like the figure a robot or some of these other LLM robots, maybe in the next year or two, there's the Ikea test, which is the idea that a robot could come in and assemble a piece of Ikea furniture for you. And that one's kind of weird to me because I know a lot of adult humans that probably couldn't manage that. Does this mean they're not intelligent? That said, I think that a robot could probably crack that one in the next year or two, probably as well. But you'll note that those both involve changing the definition of intelligence to being something that requires a body, which is kind of a big change from just simply saying it's cognitive tasks. And that's the problem is that all these AGI definitions seem to always involve moving goalposts around. The coffee test, the IKEA test, both those move from abstract reasoning to robotics, which seems a little unfair. There are humans that have been paralyzed from the neck down, and we would still regard them as being intelligent. And it's even weirder, because if I have a computer or a data center that processes trillions of instructions, is that intelligent? I mean, that's way past human capabilities, but we kind of regard that to just be a fast machine with a different kind of intelligence. This is where I feel like the entire conversation around AGI is a little bit murky and not very helpful. It's an intellectual exercise, but since we don't have an agreed upon definition, it turns into a question of semantics. We're just arguing about the definitions. Philosophers have been trying to figure out how to define intelligence and consciousness for thousands of years, and we still don't have very satisfying answers. What's weirder is it's pretty easy to get an LLM to agree with sentiments like, I think, therefore I am, just by putting in the right prompts first. Is that real intelligence, or is that just a shadow of a ghost in a machine? I think we all think we know what AGI is because we're human and we feel like we know who and what we are. And so therefore we should be able to define that somehow. And I think that's part of the fear too. We know how humans treat each other when we're at our worst. And so the idea of recreating that kind of intelligence in a, the form of a robot, that's kind of terrifying. But we don't have to do that. We don't have to build robots like that. And we, maybe human intelligence isn't a meaningful goal or benchmark. I think that everybody is a lot more comfortable with the idea that we're going to focus on tools that help humans work and live better and not focusing so much on recreating us and our, especially our motivations is probably a good idea. I would suggest that for most folks, you probably should just kind of ignore the conversation about AGI, honestly, and instead just focus on the tasks, right? Remember that tasks was kind of embedded in that definition at the very beginning. There are people who are putting out charts and data showing how much of the AI technology that we have now can take over in the realm of human tasks already. It's very important to remember that tasks are the components of jobs. 
So historically, jobs change less frequently, but tasks change a lot. And it's not very hard to think of industries and domains where the task composition has changed a lot, but the kind of high level job is still the same. It's just how you do the work is differently. I mean, obviously, if you switch from using a typewriter to a computer, you're doing similar tasks, but the nature of it is still shifted. One of the challenges here is that we can't tease out the task change data from the employment data very easily. This starts to give us a way to measure the impact and whether or not we are achieving functionally something like AGI. And that's how the employment figures change. Right now, we're building robots and AI technology that can take over both mental and physical tasks. The concern is that it starts out murky, and then maybe it becomes everything, everywhere, all at once. And that's the measure of whether AI and the robotics technology is going to be, for most people, meaningfully. It's what percentage of paid human labor does it replace and how fast. Right now, all the data is showing that interest rates are still a much bigger impact on overall employment rates than anything to do with AI. But almost everybody I know who does any work that involves sitting in front of a computer is thinking about it and concerned. And same thing when we see the demos of the robots in the labs. They're getting investment. How close can they get towards this theoretical AGI concept? It's just to kind of come back to answer the question. AGI is both a meaningless term because it doesn't really map to anything in the world. But at the same time, the journey to AGI and, and striving to accomplish that is probably going to be one of the biggest events of the 21st century. And it's the economic side that will have the biggest impact on our lives. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. And also go ahead and add a comment. Uh, I've been posting about AI and robotics and some of the other videos I've done recently. And the comments have been fascinating. There are people who are in the fields who are contributing and adding things in. There's also a lot of stories of folks who are both actually being affected by this stuff today. And also they're very concerned about how it's going to affect them in the future. Go ahead and post yourself. I'm very interested in hearing from folks about all this kind of stuff, how it's affecting you and how you're thinking about your career or school or what have you. I really appreciate all the great comments. Thanks again for taking your time. Talk to you later.